Are you a trader? Then this is your chance to show your skills. Sign up to the ultimate demo trading competition on capex.com. Easy to register. No sign up fee. Go now to capex.com. Search for the competition and sign up now to win. Terms and conditions apply. Capex.com is operated by JME Financial Services, PTY Ltd., an authorized financial services provider. Join the competition today. Capex.com. Some say it's about natural talent. We say it's about strategy, discipline, tactics, and training to be the best. We say it's about persistence. We say success comes when preparation meets opportunity. We say it's all about the team. Capix.com, Juventus' official trading partner. Chase your goals. Are you a trader? Then this is your chance to show your skills. Sign up to the ultimate demo trading competition on capex.com. Easy to register. No sign-up fee. Go now to capex.com. Search for the competition and sign up now to win. Terms and conditions apply. Capex.com is operated by JME Financial Services, PTY Ltd., an authorized financial services provider. Join the competition today. Capex.com. Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Ted Turner. Success leaves clues, kids. I just named five of the greatest names in business in the last 150 years. And they all have one thing in common. They're ball busters. They're hard as nails. Where does that leave you? I still work 50, 60 hours a week. And I haven't had to work in 35 years. You're not willing to do anything. You're not willing to sacrifice anything to be a high-performance person. I don't want to be like that. No, no, most people don't. I want to be liked. Yeah, well, see, you want to fit in. I don't... I'm the only speaker that you're ever going to hear that really, with all his heart, doesn't give a shit. If I leave here you liking me, I did something wrong. Be the kind of trader who sees the big picture. The world is changing around you. Global threats push gold, the safe haven asset, to higher prices each and every day. Now's your chance to start trading gold. Just go to capex.com and register to get up to a $5,000 bonus on your first deposit. Simply use GOLD5000 as a promo code and you're good to go. CapEx.com proudly welcomes you to the next level trading experience. Register now and start taking full advantage of the new GOLD rush. Terms and conditions apply. Exposure to GOLD obtained via contracts for difference which are leveraged products and incur a high level of risk. CapEx.com is operated by JME Financial Services, PTY Ltd., an authorized financial services provider. Look, I'm exhausted. Had it all figured out and I lost it. They say that's the cost, but feels like a lot. Stop, are you going or not? I miss certainty, miss the nine to fives, knowing exactly where I need to be and why I'm not built for this. Progress moves in slow motion, they're out making money and getting promotions, saying all the right things, pulling all the right levers. Will I sit here, write my future self love letters? Who's winning? Is this the end or beginning? Cause I'm starting to feel like reality slipping and bank accounts, they aren't very forgiving and life on edge feels like falling, not living. If effort brings victory, what am I missing? 
Nothing good comes easy when we have to. We push through, not knowing completely you're here because you're made for this next level. Taking these places that most people won't start embracing it. Who cares what they do? They're not you. You'll go through more now than you think you're supposed to, but that shows you can cope with the highs and the lows because you rose to be more. Could have run away, could have avoided the thorns, could have been comfortable. Blood, sweat, and tears, they're expendable. No more pretending, man, build something memorable. Don't drink from their cup or buy stories they tell because when all their time's up, you'll have dug your own well. You did it. Use lifelines, you're topped off for a lifetime. So drop all those one-liners. We'll get them next time. No, this time is your time. And whatever you decide will end up being real life. No stop signs, your story line. Are you a trader? Then this is your chance to show your skills. Sign up to the ultimate demo trading competition on capex.com. Easy to register. No sign up fee. Go now to capex.com. Search for the competition and sign up now to win. Terms and conditions apply. Capex.com is operated by JME Financial Services, PTY LTD, an authorized financial services provider. Join the competition today. Capex.com. The champ is here! The champ is here! The champ is here! Good afternoon and welcome to Boom Market Stock Show. This is your host, Rian Hobson, and we're drifting actually a bit off today um, of the market today as it is very slow, actually. Um, market congesting all sorts of news with the vaccine and everything that goes with it. Um, but today there's actually a story um, in um, Port Elizabeth on Nelson Mandela Bay um, where the COVID cases are actually rising as they say it is a second wave. Now, the thing is, What's, what really was irritating me is the fact that uh, the minister com came out guns blazing <clears throat> and um, blaming actually all sorts, of, all sorts of things like the alcohol, which is one of them that he blames. And, um, and also he's actually also pointing out some hot areas or hot spots, as they say. Um, for example, um, uh, Clary Park, which is one of it. Um, and then there's uh, Motherwell, there's Kwasikele, and also Chetty, Warmer. It's also the, the hotspots um, in the region um, where the virus is actually spreading rapidly. And also there's some articles that was also published that uh, the beds um, are getting, uh, it, it's actually full and it's, it's a resurgence and people are rushing to the hospital and there's no beds, there's no oxygen um, for the people. And basically how the articles is actually making it um, is actually uh, showing that it is now or trying to um, persuade people that um, that we are actually brink of collapse in, in Nelson Mandela Bay. Also on top of that, um, I see also people are blaming each other. Um, that is currently happening. Um, people are saying uh, people are not wearing their mask. It, uh, like, for example, yesterday I was reading something um, where someone was saying that um, this um, person that was in the taxi was not wearing a mask and and it was a fight in the taxi at the end of the day for the person that's not wearing a mask. Now, what I can say um, is that I can, uh, like 90% of the people that I walk past, uh, no, it's, it's not actually wearing their mask properly. Most of the people's noses are actually out. And some actually, if they speak, they can, you can still see the person's whole mouth out. So if it was really a mask story, then, um, then basically a lot of people would have been dead by now. So... The, the wearing of the mask is a bit of a, a problem and people are starting to, to blame each other um, because of that. But um, if it was really the mask, um, the, as I said, then um, most of the people don't wear they not wear their mask properly. And I think um, that a lot of people would have been dead by now. So but the thing is, is what what also it's really sinister in the data of of the whole uh, pandemic. Um, since March, I would say, uh, when we entered lockdown, end of March and April, um, the, the flu season basically stopped. Now, there's a lot of different reasons um, for that. Um, because of the lockdown, people didn't move that much. So obviously, the flu, that is what they say. 
um, the flu actually um, just basically vanished. Now, this is common flu. Now, in South Africa, uh, seasonal time with common flu, about between 11, 11 and 15,000. 11 and 15,000 people to pass away of common flu, normal flu, everyday flu, um, during the winter period. And all of a sudden, that just vanished. The, the flu just vanished. Um, uh, there was no flu season, actually, um, in South Africa or actually in the whole entire um, Northern Hemisphere. Now, um, so... Basically, with COVID, people have a bit of an understanding what's actually going on now with, with, with COVID and how it needs to be treated. We can see actually on the, on the recovery rate that South Africa actually have a very good recovery rate of about 90%. So, obviously, the scientists in South Africa, they did, they did their research and obviously something is working because we have a 90% success rate of, um, of, uh, uh, of recovering a person if he or she is getting uh, infected. Now, what I do pick up also is that children, um, uh, let me zoom into actually to Port Elizabeth. Um, Port Elizabeth or Nelson Mandela Bay is about 1.2 million people and ages between 0 to 9, which is about 20% of um, of the population in Nelson Mandela Bay, uh, twenty percent of the population is between zero and nine, and then we have eighteen percent, which is between the ages of ten to nineteen. Now, what I do pick up in the data is that there's actually zero death among these people, um, or I would say amongst children um, between the ages of zero to nine and ten to nineteen, which is something very good. Um, so there's basically no death. Now, I'm not saying that the kids don't get infected, but they don't show actually any symptoms of it. So they, they can uh, uh, have the virus, but it looks like they don't actually show any symptoms. So they, they hardly spread um, the virus. And then we have um, in, South, in Port Elizabeth specifically, 70% is between the ages of 20 to 29, and then we have 14%, which is between the ages of 30 to 39, and then we have 12% between the ages of 40 and 49, and then we have 10% um, of the population of Port Elizabeth is between 50, um, between 50 and 59, and then 6% of the population is between 60 and 69. Now, the reason why I will just stop there uh, the burning point, actually, for uh, Nelson Mandela Bay and for South Africa, actually, is between the ages of 60 to 69. Now, there, the death rate is actually a bit of a concern when it gets to COVID, and also uh, between the ages of 50 to 59, which is 10% of Nelson Mandela Bay population. Um, there's, which is actually, for me, very strange, um, between the ages of 70 to 79, the death rate is actually fairly low, in which you would think, actually, that people that are older normally uh, uh, will get the virus, and obviously the death rate would be high, but that's not the case. The story is between the ages of 60 and 69 and 50 and 59. Now, that is where the death rate is actually very high, but in a recent study um, or recent results that came out, um, it shows that between the ages of 40 and 49, there is actually also a rise of the death rate. Like, um, I think it was on the 5th of November, um, there was actually 82 deaths um, in, um, in the region. And what they say, in the Eastern Cape actually, and what they say, like 23% of them, um, actually came from Nelson Mandela Bay, and that was between the ages of 40 to 49. So, so which is actually very strange because normally the recovery rate is very high for people between the, four, the ages of 40 and 49, and you would expect automatically that, uh, that without now going through the data, you would think like, okay, the person must be between the ages of 60 and 69. But that was not the case. So, obviously, we know now there's a rise of the infections um, in, the, in the Nelson Mandela metropole, but it's not actually at, di at disaster point yet. Now, there's a lot of variables that comes into effect here. It's not just a transmission from people to people. It, um, as, they, as we all, if you can look through the data, you would see that actually between the Eastern Cape and the Western Cape, 
actually there's a rise of infections. But if you look inland, um, the, for example, Bloemfontein, um, Gauteng, um, those areas inland, and then you would pick up there that the infection rate is quite low. Well, whether they cook the books or cook the infections or, or whatever the case may be, for me, it looks like more it is to do with the weather. The colder the, the, the weather or the less um, heat there is or less sunshine that, that, that there is or the temperature is not so high, then obviously that is where your virus is actually spreading. Now, we can see that also across the world where it's now winter period in um, the northern hemisphere um, and obviously there's a rise or a second wave or a resurgence of how actually some of the people are saying in the northern hemisphere. Now, if you look to South Africa, obviously in the Western Cape and in the Eastern Cape, that is where we have a, a rise in the viruses uh, or the, a rise actually in the COVID cases and that for me, if I look now just at, at weather patterns, then it looks to me that because it's a bit colder here, that is where we see a rise in the virus. But I'm not saying that is the only reason why we see the, the, the rise in the virus. But the, 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 for me, the main thing is why they say the hospitals are full and the population size actually of people that actually get to get to be admitted to hospital that is actually fairly small now i'm not saying that there is a lot of beds for people but doesn't this where for example the beds are full fine that is what they say but if you look at the amount of covert cases per day which i will actually go through then you have to ask yourself but how is this even possible? But I will go through um, the data with you when I will just come um, after the break. But the, the thing for me is that, one, they say there's a sharp rise. I understand that. Two, they say that the beds are full or getting full. Now, is it just of COVID or is there something else that goes on? Because one thing for sure the data doesn't make sense when it comes to the beds and the rise of the COVID cases and also the rise of the death rate. For me, something bogus is happening here. Because if the death rates, which, which look, it looks for me that there is some death rate. I'm not ignoring that. But for me to say that there is no oxygen for A, B, and C, or for person A, B, and C, and the beds are full, and it is not full, because it's not at the emergency point yet, what the hell is the government or the public hospitals are actually doing? Because one thing also is that, I don't know if you guys saw that article or um, their statistics, um, Netcare, actually profits are down by 98%. Now, during a pandemic, so now you have to ask yourself, how the hell is Netcare, which is a hospital, a private hospital, profits are down and you have a pandemic? So my thing is this, if, are, are these people in these hospitals or reporters or whatever cooking something? Yeah, because... You can't say that there is no oxygen for this one. You can't say there is no uh, uh, beds for this people. And the system is not at the breaking point yet. Because if you look at the data, it is not there yet. It is not there yet. And these guys are saying that there is no oxygen. There, <laughs> there is no beds. That uh, There was one thing that I was um, looking at at the ENCA where they say that the person is actually were dying in the, uh, in the corridors because there was not a bed for this person. Now, what the hell did the government do from April to, to today? That is, for me, a big question. What the hell did the government do? Because people are blaming people now. The government is blaming alcohol and the reckless behavior of people. But 
it is not that the virus were reaching or the infection rates were reaching, reaching its peak that was between June and July. Now that for me is a big question here, but also there's some other stuff that I will also cover with you. I will just take a short break, but I will cover some serious information here and I will just take a short break and then I'll be back with you. The champ is here! say it's about natural talent we say it's about strategy discipline tactics and training to be the best we say it's about persistence we say success comes when preparation meets opportunity we say it's all about the team. Capix.com, Juventus' official trading partner. Chase your goals. Are you a trader? Then this is your chance to show your skills. Sign up to the ultimate demo trading competition on Capex.com. Easy to register. No sign-up fee. Go now to capex.com. Search for the competition and sign up now to win. Terms and conditions apply. Capex.com is operated by JME Financial Services, PTY LTD, an authorized financial services provider. Join the competition today. Capex.com. Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Ted Turner. Success leaves clues, kids. I just named five of the greatest names in business in the last 150 years. And they all have one thing in common. They're ball busters. They're hard as nails. Where does that leave you? I still work 50, 60 hours a week. And I haven't had to work in 35 years. You're not willing to do anything. You're not willing to sacrifice anything to be a high performance person. I don't want to be like that. No, no, most people don't. I want to be liked. Yeah, well, see, you want to fit in. I don't, I'm the only speaker that you're ever going to hear that really, with all his heart, doesn't give a shit. If I leave here you liking me, I did something wrong. Are you a trader? Then this is your chance to show your skills. Sign up to the ultimate demo trading competition on capex.com. Easy to register. No sign-up fee. Go now to capex.com. Search for the competition and sign up now to win. Terms and conditions apply. Capex.com is operated by JME Financial Services, PTY LTD, an authorized financial services provider. Join the competition today. Capex.com. Are you a trader? The champ is here! 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 Good afternoon and welcome to Bull Market Stock Show. This is your host, Ryan Option, and we're doing a bit of the Nelson Mandela Bay. Uh, COVID story um, that is a bit of a problem and I see actually that the, uh, the community of the Nelson Mandela Bay is a bit of a panic and which I actually uh, picked up in the data that the system is not actually yet at broken point when it gets to COVID and for me it's a bit something sinister um, as, I, as I look now through the data. Now obviously I did a bit of a population background for you um, that the bulk of the population, or I would say about 38%, or I would say basically 35% of the population, is, is of Nelson Mandela Bay, um, is people that can actually basically absorb 
um, um, the virus and don't um, actually push out any any symptoms. Now, obviously, I did also put uh, a bit of the weather patterns in there because I looked at that as well because when I did research, I, I was reading that weather also playing an important role um, that it, where it's warmer um, in certain areas, um, that is where the virus don't spread so much. If it's colder, then obviously the virus is spreading so much, which we can see now today in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, the, the burning points actually in... Um, um, in uh, Nelson Mandela Bay is, as they say, it's Motherwell, Chetty, Warmer, New Brighton, and Clary Park. Now, uh, th that is what the, 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 the data suggests, or I would not say the data suggests, that is what they said. Um, that is the, the hot spots or the burning spots in actually in Port Elizabeth. Now, there's about an average of about 500 uh, new cases that comes up in the Nelson Mandela Bay Metropole, and the active cases are just actually under uh, 5,000. So that is now the active cases, uh, which is about five, uh, just under 5,000, and the active cases, which comes out every day, it, it's averaging about 400. Some have it at, at 500, and I looked at more, it's just below uh, 500. That is now the um, active cases that are coming in every day. Now, as I said, the bulk of the population, I would say, um, but which is now the ages between, I would say, I can say actually between where the death rate is not so high and also the spread of infection is not so high, is normally between the ages of 20 to zero, I would say, because that is what I, I picked up. It's, it's, it, it looks like the, um, I'm not saying the people are not, not going to die of it, um, but it, it, it shows that they are not the ones who actually spread the virus to uh, a, a, a lot of people, and it looks like they can ab uh, absorb it. Now, for me, if I look now at the at, at Motherwell, Chetty, Warmer, New Brighton, now they were specifically by stating that Warmer location um, is actually one of the uh, the burning points, or, or as they say, the hot spots. And then I take in consideration also there is in all these areas, um, which is now Motherwell, Chetty, Warmer, New Brighton, and then we have Clary Park, which is now, um, it's, it's more of a taxi rank um, that is, there's also a shopping center, but there's a taxi rank there where basically people from the northern areas uh, moving to uh, more to your areas of your rain and warm and all of those things. So, so it's normally as a taxi rank, and I would say basically, I need to say more, but more, but you should point out people have moved quite a lot. So the movement in the very far is a heavy movement, and that um, um, that can be seen as a hot spot. Hot spot. Now, now, if you look, if you look at Walmart, Jetty, Motherwell, New Brighton, and, and not, not, not much Clary Park, I take Clary Park out, but I must say Clary Park is more of a place of transportation where people move from one point to the next. Now, there is clinics in these areas. Um, besides now Clary Park, there is actually a mobile clinic that normally stands there, um, but not actually every single day. But in Motherwell, Chetty, Warmer, and New Brighton, there's actually clinics there. And these areas are actually, that is what also what, the, um, what they say, is where the infection rates are high, or the burning points, and then also there's clinics there. Now, in these areas, that is where the amount of deaths are also very high. Now, if you reverse back to June, July, and there's a lot of articles that I also picked up. News 24 is one of them, and also the Herald was the other one. Now, there was complaints of chronic uh, uh, tablets that the people need to get. And there was a shortage of it. And one thing for sure, people, there were at, at one point in, um, in Kwasikele, and also in Chetty, there was, a, there was also an incident, where the clinics didn't give the people actually the chronic pills. There's a lot of articles uh, surrounding the story. There's even, if you go on Facebook, if you go on the social media pages, you would hear the complaints of people where they actually say they couldn't get their pills there. They needed to move from 
from Chetty, they needed to go to uh, uh, another clinic. So they needed to move to get the chronic pills. Not the testing, nothing to do now with COVID, but the chronic pills. Because the problem that I do pick up is age, the, the age group that is vulnerable um, in Port Elizabeth is 60 and six, uh, between 60 and 69, 50 and 59. That is where the most deaths is. Look, the infection rate, I don't think there's anything that can slow down the infection rates. People need to go to work. People need to do shopping. People need to live. So for you to say that you will curb down the infection rate, that is now a bit very strange. So you want to tell me you want to stop something that is totally invisible. Listen, you, you can wear plastic bags all week. It won't help. The, the infection rate will always be there. <laughs> that I can assure. It's not a second wave, uh, um, what the media is saying. It's a second wave. So... Basically, it is where the virus is totally dead and then it comes back. No, the virus was always here since when it arrived here. So the infection rate can't disappear or the virus itself can't disappear. What I'm more concerned on is one is the beds that, that, that they say are very full. And then on the other side, the chronic uh, uh, um, shortages, or I would say the the chronic tablets that the people needed to get where there were shortages where people needed to move. That is where my concern is because why, why, is, why is that actually a, a, a st okay, it was always a, a, a problem even before COVID because my thing is this, why are people blaming each other where these problems were there long before? And nobody seems to, uh, uh, or it was reported, the government just didn't pay attention to it. And now all of a sudden, that is now, it causes people to die. Now they're blaming alcohol and want to close down taverns, which they say is the burning point, because the virus is basically spreading. Now, what I do pick up, if I look at the data specifically, is that, yes, there is an infection rate, but one thing that I do pick up is that people did not get the chronic, chronic medication. Now, that is far worse than getting COVID. Obviously, the person can get COVID. That we can't dispute. But did it, will, the peop, or will the person or people, will they not be much more stronger if they got their chronic prescriptions? And why would people that needed to get their chronic pres prescriptions, like now, why didn't they get it at New Brighton, Clary Park, oh, sorry, Chetty, or Warmer? Why do those people needed to move to other areas to get their prescriptions? So now that the government is blaming the people and people are blaming everybody else, the thing is, you can't stop the virus. The thing is, what you needed to do is to prevent the people from dying. That was, that, is, that was the main reason why we had a lockdown in the first place, is to get the infrastructure right so that people don't have to now move, basically. So they give, that is what they said in the beginning of this year, that people will get the uh, 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 chronic prescriptions in three months in advance, which was not the case. It was totally not the case. So now the question is, is the beds really full of COVID patients or is the beds full of people that are just sick because they didn't get the chronic prescriptions? I will just take a short break and then I'll be back with you. The champ is here! The champ is here! Some say it's about natural talent. We say it's about strategy, discipline, tactics, and training to be the best. 
we say it's about persistence. We say success comes when preparation meets opportunity. We say it's all about the team. Capix.com, Juventus' official trading partner. Chase your goals. Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Ted Turner. Success leaves clues, kids. I just named five of the greatest names in business in the last 150 years. And they all have one thing in common. They're ball busters. They're hard as nails. Where does that leave you? I still work 50, 60 hours a week. And I haven't had to work in 35 years. You're not willing to do anything. You're not willing to sacrifice anything to be a high performance person. I don't want to be like that. No, no, most people don't. I want to be liked. Yeah, well, see, you want to fit in. I don't, I, I'm the only speaker that you're ever going to hear that really, with all his heart, doesn't give a shit. If I leave here, you liking me, I did something wrong. Are you a trader? Then this is your chance to show your skills. Sign up to the ultimate demo trading competition on capex.com. Easy to register. No sign-up fee. Go now to capex.com. Search for the competition and sign up now to win. Terms and conditions apply. Capex.com is operated by JME Financial Services, PTY LTD, an authorized financial services provider. Join the competition today. Capex.com. Be the... I'm exhausted. Had it all figured out and I lost it. They say that's the cost, but it just feels like a lot. Stop. Are you going or not? I miss certainty. Miss the nine to fives knowing exactly where I need to be and why I'm not built for this. Progress moves in slow motion. They're out making money and getting promotions, saying all the right things, pulling all the right levers. Will I sit here, write my future self love letters? Who's winning? Is this the end or beginning? Cause I'm starting to feel like reality's slipping And bank accounts, they aren't very forgiving And life on edge feels like falling, not living If effort brings victory, what am I missing? Nothing good comes easy when we have to We push through not knowing completely You're here cause you're made for this next level Taking these places that most people won't Start embracing it Who cares what they do, they're not you You'll go through more now than you think you're supposed to But that shows you can cope with the highs and the lows Cause you rose to be more Could've run away, could've avoided the thorns Could've been comfortable Blood, sweat, and tears, they're expendable No more pretending, man, build something memorable Don't drink from their cup or buy stories they tell Cause when all their time's up, you'll have dug your own well, you did it. Use lifelines, you're topped off for a lifetime. So drop all those one-liners. We'll get them next time. No, this time is your time. And whatever you decide will end up being real life. No stop signs, just storylines. This whole thing is a misunderstanding, a miscalculation. Jumped and missed the landing. I'm mystified. I can waste so much time. These ovations are strictly imagination, not standing. So much for planning. Guess fate left without me. Those failure statistics, yeah, they'll be about me. Was Overly optimistic, forgot the logistics, guess we all learn sometime, don't we? Good is not good enough, no. How long do I stay down before I let go? I buried my pride and took it inside, but never enough. It takes a toll, it gets old getting told. You've got miles of road left to go. You're alone with this future unknown, just go home. Just go home, it's safe there. Yeah, I'll find some embrace there. Look, it's time to admit defeat. A humble retreat, check the box and complete to my core intrinsically. It's not for me, I can't do this. I knew this is how it would be. No fame, no fortune, no names on marquees. Just running in place every day on repeat. This is the world I want to see where everything's taken with no guarantees. No. Come on, man, pick your head off. Go back inside half a life, learning to get up. How can I make you see that you have everything you need and what you want to be is never out of reach? Fate deceives sometimes, but 
Destiny's calling, so can't let the phone ring. You know there's no all knowing. Go level up, no letdowns. Let the world in, push fear out. It's self belief, it starts right now. When hell freezes, you lay down. But until then, this is your town. It's your story, it's your crown. Live in the clouds, feet on the ground. They stand still, you run around. Go mesmerize, so they socialize. There's dollar signs to be maximized. If you live it right, regret nothing. Loud applause, the sweetest sound. And this moment won't happen again. And never becomes forever unless you choose to begin. This will see greatness in each step and power and progress. Your future, yeah, that's limitless. It's infinite. Don't forget you want this. Are you a trader? Then this is your chance to show your skills. Sign up to the ultimate demo trading competition on capex.com. Easy to register, no sign up fee. Go now to capex.com. Search for the competition and sign up now to win. Terms and conditions apply. Capex.com is operated by JME Financial Services, PTY LTD an authorized financial services provider. Join the competition today. Capex.com The champ is here! The champ is here! The champ is here! Good afternoon and welcome to Bull Market Stock Show. This is your host, Ryan Robson, and we're doing a bit of the COVID story in the Nelson Mandela Bay. Now, now the reason why I actually started to do some, some research on this is actually when the, the results of, um, um, of Netcare actually um, came out and also the panics, panic buttons that is actually currently running in Port Elizabeth. But the whole thing started with Netcare where they actually said that they, um, um, they profit slumped because um, the hospital, 98% of the, hospi of the hospital was basically inactive. Oh, excuse me. So, so, then so then you're like, okay, during a pandemic, how the hell is it possible that the hospital uh, will have its facilities, 98% of their facilities is not operational? Because as they said, they prepared actually for um, people to come in and throw and this was now in the height of, the, of our winter. And nothing basically happened, and that's why there was no foot trafficking, and that's why they profit slump. Now, so you would think, like, uh, if that is the case, then then why would they say actually there's a pandemic? Because obviously you would think it's a pandemic, the hospitals will be full and everything, and it will be a mess. That is what we that is what we expect. But what the finance actually uh, says. Uh, or I would say the finance on um, private hospitals, it was not the case. So obviously something is really wrong here. Because you can't have a private hospital not making money in the height of a pandemic. So where is this people? Now, and then you have uh, uh, articles that say people are going to have oxygen and all of these things. You're like... Then you have the private hospital that is preparing for these things, but there's absolutely nothing. So if is if is the media really fooling people? And I and I and I think it was three weeks ago. Um, there was a, another article out where they actually say Port Elizabeth Netcare that um, uh, there is no beds or uh, the beds are getting full. So you're like you just actually reported now. That your profit slumped by ninety, the the the, the uh, foot trafficking in the hospital was ninety eight percent down, which is understandable, um, because it's, it, it, which is not understandable because it was locked down and there was supposed to be a pandemic and there was no foot trafficking. Now you say all of a sudden that your hospital is full, so who is fooling? Or is the hospital really full of COVID people, or is the hospital full of other? diseases that was not treated that is for me the actual story because in the pandemic there was no food trafficking all of a sudden now there is food trafficking it's all they're lying or they they are, they they just push out a whole fear-mongering story 
Because if I look at the population size of actually of Port Elizabeth, and, and actually if you look at the population size across South Africa, then the average age or the medium age is about 25. So which for which say like the bulk of the population or the of a very strong uh, 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 percentage of the population are between the ages of zero, as I explained, and 30, or 39, basically. So that is actually where the bulk of the population, which is basically youth. So that could be one of the main reasons why our um, um, uh, recovery rate is so high of over 90% because obviously of the bulk of the youth. And that is what I also explained in a, not, in a, in a lot of other podcasts that, uh, podcasts that, I, that I do have. But my, my thing is for, for Port Elizabeth is that we have to actually look at data specifically and not actually just read on, on articles that we, that, we, that, that we see or on the news or everything. But once you look at the data, then you would see that this whole betting thing, it, 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 it can be from accidents. It could be from, from alcohol that, that, that make, make the bets full. But for me personally, what I picked up, the people that are really in hospital is actually people with a diabetic, uh, 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 chronic diseases, basically in general. And they are the people who are actually there because they didn't take their medication. And the, the thing is, obviously, there's people with COVID that also need, so, uh, uh, that need assistance. But the problem is, obviously, if people skip their chronic medication, what do you expect? People will end up in hospital. So this whole entire, the entire story was not managed properly. Because you closed down... Uh, um, uh, facilities like your clinics in, in Warmer, Chetty, uh, uh, New Brighton, and all of those things, obviously people will get sick in that area because they didn't get their medication, their chronic medication. And, and if you look at the reports, all of those ages are between the ages of 50 and 69 or the people that pass away is between that ranges, or the bulk of the people that pass away is between those ranges. Because those people didn't get their medication. And they are the people who's actually making the hospital full. Now, obviously, the, the chances that they may contract COVID is very high. Because obviously, they didn't get their medication. And the people need needs to travel as well. So the whole story with... with uh, with the COVID and people are not getting getting their medication, that is actually where the problem is. If they can sort out that mess and not starting to blame people or people blaming other people, then we might get a different result. Because what is now the problem, as the minister was saying, alcohol. Hey, hey, hey. The thing is, is the distribution points of chronic diseases. Or, or sorry, of, of chronic medication that is absolutely critical, that people need to get their medication. So the people don't have to move. And most of the people are old anyway. So they just want to get their medication and go home. That's it. So obviously the people that are literally moving is people that are working. And to say that people must wear their masks and listen... As I said earlier, you can sanitize until you turn orange. It's very hard to stop the spread of something that you can't see. And whether you wear a mask as well, and most of the people are not even wearing the mask properly. Look, personally, I needed to Google um, to look at how you need to, to wear a mask. And most of the time, most of the time, people don't even wash their mask. So, so the thing is, for me personally, if they really want to make people fear or, or, or inject fear into people, at least make it, <laughs> I would say, make it more logical. Because they can't just say they're going to shut down the economy or, 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 or Eastern Cape's economy again, but you don't look at the actual problem. The actual problem is, is the people didn't get the chronic, uh, chronic medication. 
That is actually a, a huge problem. Now, how will the Eastern Cape government react to this? I personally don't know. Because this problem is not new. It's just that the problem is now totally now exposed. Because they've been messing up from building scooters and not serving the people in the first place. And now we're sitting in the height of a pandemic and, in, and, and these guys injecting fear of the people and blaming and people starting to blame each other, which is absolutely wrong. The thing is, is very simple. Stop injecting fear in people that people can calm down, get the people's medication, and you will solve half, or not even half, you will, so, you will solve majority of the problems. But it doesn't make sense if you know precisely that people with chronic, chronic diseases is actually the problem or is actually very vulnerable to this disease, that it can be stopped if you just distribute the medication. That's it. That's all from my side. I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Um, and then I will see you guys tomorrow again at 1 o'clock. Bye-bye. The champ is here!